everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Rachel today I am bringing you guys my August wrap-up for those of you guys that don't know I do mid-month wrap-ups as well as end-of-the-month wrap-ups because I just read a lot of books every month and I never want my videos to be more than like 15 minutes long or so so I just thought it would be best to divide my wrap-ups into two videos so today I have 14 books to talk about which is really insane that I read 14 books in the span of about 15 or 16 days. So without further ado, let's just get into it. And just so you guys know, I am going to be talking about the book that I liked the least and work my way up to the book that I liked the most. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is Her Last Secret by Barbara Copperthwaite. This is a mystery thriller and I feel like I can't talk too much about the plot without spoiling things. But what I will say is that we've got a few main characters. One of them is Dominique, who is the wife slash mother of the family. She is a paranoid wreck. She thinks that somebody is constantly following her. Then we have Ben, who is the husband slash father, and he is living in a web of lies. And then we have Ruby, who is their teenage daughter, and she is kind of dealing with a lot. Um, for one thing, she's getting these weird, abusive and bullying text messages that she doesn't know who they're coming from and she's just dealing with a lot of bullying and things like that in general and then we have Mouse who is a seven-year-old girl she is Ruby's younger sister as well as the daughter of Dominique and Ben as well and she is just an adorable little girl who loves to read this book was really weird and it was such a weird experience for me that I ended up not being able to rate this because I just don't really know where to put this book <laughs> in terms of like my enjoyment or anything like that. You know, on the one hand, this was a very intriguing book and I did think that the plot was interesting, but on the other hand, it was kind of problematic. Um, for one thing, there are a lot of trigger warnings for this book, uh, one of them being cheating, thoughts of suicide, as well as thoughts of a certain character contemplating murdering everyone in their life. Um, also, there are two characters in this book that are very problematic because um, at one point in this book, they kind of idolize the two shooters that were involved in Columbine. Um, so yeah, it's, there are parts of this book that are very cringy. And I know that all these characters are meant to be morally gray in some way, but I just found myself not really caring about any of the characters if, except for Mouse, who is the little girl, because she is just the sweetest thing. And I feel so bad for her that she is stuck in this crazy and weird family. And also the plot twist at the end was just okay for me. It didn't really blow me away. So yeah, all that being said, I really don't know what to rate this. Okay, so the next book I want to talk about is Again But Better by Christine Riccio. This is actually an arc that I got off of NetGalley a few months back and I'm just now getting into it. So this book follows Shane and she feels like she's been doing college wrong this entire time. And she decides to do this study abroad program in London for a whole semester. And without telling her parents, she enrolls in the creative writing track. She is majoring in pre-med, but she doesn't really want to do that. And so she decides to do this study abroad program to see if this writing career uh, really kind of pans out in any way. And then basically the study abroad program doesn't really go all that well. A lot of things kind of happen. My overall impression of this book is that it was a journey. I mean, wow, it was it was quite a ride. Um, to be quite honest, I didn't expect much out of this book because it is written by a booktuber. Um, Christine is known as Poland Bananas, I think. And I don't know why I just have this idea in my mind that booktubers can't also be good authors. But of course, that's not the case. Of course, there are booktubers out there that are also really great writers. But to be quite honest, I don't know, because of like Christine's personality, I don't know, I just didn't expect much out of this book. You know, when I first finished this book, I was going to give it four stars. But then I started reading some reviews on Goodreads. And I realized that there are quite a few issues with this book that did downgrade my rating to a three star. So the main character, Shane, is pretty much Christine herself. And I'm kind of conflicted about that. Because on the one hand, I'm totally in the camp of 
write what you know and Christine knows herself and so why wouldn't she create a character that's like herself but then on the other hand it's like uh, I just like wanted Christine to get more creative with her character I don't with her main character that is I mean I did find her character to be unique and relatable but I don't know as you can tell I'm very conflicted about Shane's character you know there were times that I really didn't enjoy where the story was going throughout and I did find Shane and Pilot's relationship to be very problematic namely because for most of this book Pilot is dating somebody else and Shane in some way is still trying to like wiggle her way into his life I don't know um but on the same token it does take two to tango in a sense and so Pilot is just as problematic as Shane is so I I can't really just blame Shane. I do think that the first half overall dragged quite a bit and I think that overall this book was a little long and I do think that other aspects could have been fleshed out better. So I do think this is a pretty solid debut. Um, it's just kind of a weird book to review. I don't know if I would recommend it but I feel like, I don't know, I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this book if you have read it. So definitely leave your spoiler free thoughts down below if you would like to because I would definitely like to discuss this book with more people. The next book that I want to discuss is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This of course is an American classic. Um, yeah, I for some reason have never read this book somehow so I thought it would be a good idea to read such an American classic. For those of you guys that may not know, this story basically follows the life of Scout who is a six slash seven year old girl. I think I think they're in Mississippi or Alabama. I don't know why. I think Alabama. I don't know why. I can't remember that right now. But she has a older brother named Jem and she has a father named Atticus who is a lawyer. And there are quite a few characters in this book because a lot of this book kind of chronicles the lives of not only Scout and her family but also like her neighbors and the people that live in this town. And then there is also the plot line of Tom Robinson who is a black man that has been accused of rape by a white woman. Basically Atticus defends Tom in the trial for the rape. So I ended up giving this three stars. I unfortunately didn't really enjoy it all that much. Um, so basically when I first started reading this I tried just reading the physical book but I got about 40 pages in and I was really bored. Like it was really slow moving. I just didn't care about what I was reading because it was all about Scout and like her neighbors and just like her life and I thought that the plot line about Tom Robinson was going to start way sooner than it did. So I did basically switch to the audiobook um, and I will say that that did um, help with my enjoyment of the book but I still found myself zoning out every now and then. Um, it wasn't until about the 50% mark that the plot line about Tom Robinson even came into play which was just kind of tedious to be quite honest. But I will say once we finally got to the trial this book definitely got a lot more interesting and I wish that more of the book would have been centered around this plot line. I just feel like the trial went by kind of fast and then the last 25% or so of this book was like back to Scout's life and other storylines. Now really the only characters that I appreciated were Atticus Finch and Tom Robinson. Like I mentioned earlier Atticus was Tom's lawyer. Um, I especially appreciated his character once he was in the courtroom and once he was you know questioning witnesses and talking to the jury directly. Now I can totally see why this is a revolutionary novel especially at the time it was written. This was published in 1960 I believe um, but for me I just didn't love it and I am really sad about that. Now I could appreciate the discussions about racial prejudice as well as class prejudice but at the end of the day I just feel like this book is kind of dated and I don't know I feel like nowadays there's just so much better literature out there written about these topics. Um, like I said I can definitely appreciate what this book was at the time and why so many people love it but I I don't know I just mm, I'm just missing something from this book. Okay and the next two books I want to discuss are Legend and Prodigy both by Marie Lu. This is the first and second book of the Legend trilogy. I'm gonna focus on Legend first and then I'll move on to Prodigy. Um, so this story centers around June and Day and basically this is a dystopian futuristic novel and in the future the United States has split into two different nations. There's the colonies and then there's 
there's the Republic and the Republic is where both June and Day live um, and basically June is like a prodigy and she is very highly regarded and she went to college very early in life she's only 15 and is in college um, and then we have Day who is essentially a criminal of the Republic and their lives meet because uh, Day is the prime suspect in June's brother's murder. I ended up giving both Legend and Prodigy 3.5 stars, but Legend, I really liked that it was a fast paced and enjoyable read. Um, I do think that this plot is overall kind of just a generic dystopian YA story. To me, there's not a ton that's unique about it, although I will say I really like how Marie Lu used um, rising sea level as a part of this futuristic dystopian world because as we all know rising sea levels are definitely imminent and are most likely going to happen in the next 50 years or so so I thought that that was really cool but other than that this was pretty generic um also especially in this first book there is some kind of annoying insta love happening which is just kind of yikes prodigy here's the cover for that this is the second book um I enjoyed this one a lot too although with this installment there were a lot of plot twists that I saw coming from like a mile away um, this one isn't quite as action-packed but I still think it's a solid sequel. Um, overall I do think I would recommend this trilogy if you haven't read them. Um, I know that the series has been out for quite some time and Marie Lu is actually publishing a fourth book in this series I think in a couple months which I'll probably check out. And I do think that the audiobooks are really good. I have been listening to this whole series on audiobook and I think that both the narrators are really good. So I think if you're just looking for a fast-paced dystopian audiobook I would say check it out but at the same time it's also not the best um, dystopian series ever so keep that in mind. The next two books that I want to discuss are the first two novels in the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. This is the first book Vampire Academy and the second book Frostbite. First I'm going to discuss Vampire Academy. So just to tell you guys a little bit about this plot. Essentially in this world there are two different types of vampires. There's the Maroi which are like the good vampires. They they actually um, possess magic. Um, and then there's the Strigoi which are the bad vampires and they are immortal. And the reason why they're bad is because you have to do something really awful to become a Strigoi. And they are also a threat because they are overall stronger and faster than the Maroi. And then there are Dampiers, I think of how that's how it's pronounced. Either Dampier or Dampier. I'll like put it here so you can see what the word looks like. Um, and they are essentially half breeds between either like humans and Maroi vampires or between another Dampier and a Maroi. And Dampiers are the ones that protect the Maroi from the Strigoi. I really enjoyed this first book. I gave it 3.5 stars. And this is a YA book that was written in 2007 and it is strangely not. Not problematic. Um, this is definitely uh, vampires meets Gossip Girl and honestly I'm so here for it. These are definitely fast and light reads and I really have been enjoying them. I also really like all of the characters so far. Um, and then with Frostbite I actually liked this one a bit more than Vampire Academy. I gave this one four stars. Um, I really think that Rochelle Mead stepped it up with character development especially with Rose. Rose is our main character. Her character development in this was really really solid. And I also liked the introduction of Adrian, who was a new character in this book. And there were even some events and kind of plot twists towards the end that actually made me tear up. I definitely wasn't expecting some of the things that happened in this book. So yeah, um, I am really excited to read the next two books in this series this month. And the next book I want to talk about is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is Elizabeth Acevedo's second novel. I read The Poet X last year and absolutely adored it. Gave it five stars. So this story centers around Iman and she is actually a teen mom. I believe she's around 16 or 17 years old and she loves cooking and she's really great at it and she ends up taking this brand new cooking class that her high school is offering. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. Imani is such a great character. She's such a strong person but also very kind and loving to her daughter and to her family and she's just a badass. She just works hard for everything she has and I totally appreciate that. I I thought this was overall a very unique story because I feel like there aren't many YA books written about 
girls who like to cook, you know? Elizabeth Acevedo, I adore her writing style. I just think that she is so great at relating to teens, but also being able to relate to really anyone who picks up her books. Um, I did listen to the audiobook for this and Acevedo herself narrates it and she is just a fantastic narrator. The next book that I want to discuss is The Last Namsara by Kristen Chiarelli. It is a series, but it's a series of companion novels, so you can definitely read them as standalones. This is a really unique story about this girl named Asha, and she is a dragon slayer, and she essentially works for her father, who is the king of the land, and this land is called Fearguard. And the people of Fearguard kind of see her as this villain and treat her in the same way. And throughout this book, she realizes that things may not be what they seem and that she may not be the villain that she has been brought up to believe that she is. Um, there are some really cool and unique aspects about this story such as how dragons are used in this world and how the telling of stories relates to dragons. I would definitely recommend checking this out because of how unique it is. There's also a really sweet forbidden romance in this. I did overall enjoy it. I do think that it started out kind of slow there were some times where I had issues recalling exposition as I was reading later in the book because I feel like facts and stories and things were just kind of thrown at the reader sometimes and so I would find myself reading a paragraph and then I would be like wait why is this person doing that? Or why is the law like that? But I did enjoy this for what it is. And then the other four star books that I read this month were Only for a Night and A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. These were two books that I read for the 24 hour Smutathon. I actually uploaded a whole reading vlog about my experience reading all the books that I read for that. So I will definitely link that down below. Okay, the next book that I wanna talk about is A Tragic Kind of Wonderful by Eric Lindstrom. I gave this 4.5 stars. I really really enjoyed it. Tell you a little bit about the plot. This centers around Mel Hannigan who is a teenage girl. She has bipolar disorder and she's just dealing with a lot of different drama in her life that threatens to basically knock her off her equilibrium. I enjoyed this so much. I thought that it was really well paced and really interesting. From what I have done my own little research about, the bipolar rep in this is really solid. Um, it was really cool just being immersed in Mel's mind and getting to kind of experience Experience a little bit of what it's like to have bipolar disorder. Of course, every person with bipolar disorder has a different experience, but it was really interesting reading about Mel's experience herself. And because I felt so immersed in Mel's mind, this did make for a pretty intense reading experience. I also want to note that I really enjoyed the romance in this. I thought it was really cute and really sweet. And then we are finally getting to my two five-star reads. And the first one I want to talk about is The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. I can't believe that it's taken me this long to finally read one of her books but I'm so glad that I did because it was so so good definitely my favorite historical romance that I have ever read so far this is also a book that I covered in my 24-hour smutathon vlog so I will just send you to that video as opposed to taking up more time in this video talking about the plot and all of that but yeah it was just so good and I just couldn't resist giving it five stars and then my last five star read and my last read of the month is Harry Potter and the Philosopher Stone. I also did a complete reading vlog all about my experience reading this. Um, I have actually been rereading the Harry Potter series for the very first time, which has been really, really cool. No surprise at all that I gave this five stars. It was just really cool revisiting this world again and seeing the differences between the book and the movie. And I can't wait to continue my reread next month. And that is it for my August wrap up, you guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you would consider subscribing. Don't forget to push that notification bell button below so that you'll be notified every time I upload. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!